what's up tech friends Elric Ferris here once again on the motherboards.org YouTube channel with my co-host Shannon Robb he's a product rep over at Thermaltake amongst many other jobs I hear and today we're gonna do the quick magical unboxing of the Thermaltake Armor Revo Snow Edition case so before we do anything else let's do this magical unboxing hocus pocus super freaking focus unbox this box now okay so now that we've got the case out Let's hand the show over to Mr. Shannon Robb and let him talk about this new Thermaltake Armor Revo Case. All right, folks, so without any more further ado, we're going to let Shannon here take over and drive as we talk about this cool new Armor Revo. All right, well, though starting off, the Armor Revo has external four five and a quarter inch base and those are external there is one included bracket which converts to a three and a half inch insulation for not necessarily floppy drives as much as media card readers or something like that it also has six internal three and a half or 2.5 inch compatible quick swap trays so that they're easy to they're easy to remove their plastic they're tool free you don't have to worry about using screws or any of that it makes it much faster to install drives we also have the cooling solution which is three 200 millimeter fans, one in the front, one in the side panel, and one in the top. Now, let me ask you a question, Chad. Now, do you actually have to have any tools at all to put the case and everything together other than putting the motherboard in there and your stuff for your, you know, obviously for putting your CPU cooler? Does the case itself, though, can it all be done by hand? Because as you've been talking, I've been just kind of taking these screws off here, and they seem to come off very nice and easily. So is the rest of the case inside all very nice and just, you know, simple ergonomic like this all the way through and through? Yeah, for the most part, it's tool free. There's, there's very little areas unless you were changing out fans or like you said, putting in your motherboard or installing a cooler where you might need tools. Now, um, what about Rodney Reynolds? Is Rodney Reynolds going to be disappointed with this case because my fans in the world need to know if Rodney's going to be disappointed. Is this a removable motherboard tray? It is not a removable motherboard tray. All right, we apologize to you, Rodney. <laughs> Hats off to you, Boy Harper. Well, that's something you'll see that there's not a lot of removable motherboard trays anymore because when it comes to cable routing, when you're routing it to the front, you're tying everything up. So if you remove the motherboard tray and you have all your drives here, theoretically, you've got to be able to move those cables. So if you have your cables routed through, for instance, we have very large pockets here for cable management. If you're routing all the cables through there and going to the drives, you're going to pull that motherboard tray out. Where's those cables going to go? Right, you're going to have some serious issues there. Well, we see one side already came off nice and easily, so I'll go ahead and just remove the other one. Now, folks, to remove it, all you have to do is just unscrew the little screws. You're going to pull it sideways. And then now we'll just go ahead, and you guys can take a close-up of seeing the side of the panel. Here's the front of the panel we're showing you here. And then here is the back of the panel for you to see. Also, just to show you, you have the contact points right here. You'll notice when you took that panel off, you didn't have to unplug it. It's got direct connections. Oh, so that's pretty cool. So no more little wire cable running from the back of the case into the fan giving you a little problem. I hated that. Yeah, it's pre-wired contact right there. So as soon as you close the side fan or the side panel, the side fan starts going. Excellent, folks. You guys can see right here a close-up right here is the contact point here on the case right here where it makes an end connection. So when you close the case door back on, it closes this up and you got your fan working. Now, is this fan, is it taking air in or is this fan taking air out? At its default setting, it actually pulls air in. So therefore, the airflow design, you have two fans pulling inward, which is your front 200 and your side 200. The top 200 and the rear 140 are both outlets. Creating opposite flow pressure? Yeah, basically pulling air out. Okay, all right, that's pretty cool. So let's continue just driving on around it. Let's, uh, let's go to the front of the case right now and let's go ahead and let's remove the front panel so that everybody on the home audience can go ahead and see that. So let's go ahead and, and pop that part of it off. Okay, and then folks, you guys can see, let's just talk about that real quick. You guys can see the front of this. You can see there's two little side doors in the side. Now, what these little doors have to do with anything, I think it was part of the armor design. Is there anything specific about these doors or, or no? No, they're more just a styling concept. They're more just something that makes you look at it twice. You don't look at it once and just go, okay, you know, cool, a case. You look at it and, you know, it kind of catches you and you just look at it and go, why is that there? It's and pretty so it cool. And so just makes you kind of, you know, makes you, it's something you just, Catches your eye and makes you want to look at it another time. I had a dream the other day. I was telling the camera about it. It was like like we were being invaded by aliens, but all the parts of their spaceships were like made of computer parts. This kind of looks like the main body of the flying ship right here. You got it right there. Where do you think we came up with the idea? I knew. You guys keep invading my dreams. 
Now I want I want commission on that. Now we all these front panels also very easily they remove. I was a little bit Nor rough normally there. they pull outward actually. <laughs> yeah, I kind of went a little rough on that one. And they also feature inside they feature a padded foam piece which also doubles as a filter. So these can be removed and washed as well, correct? Yeah, they can, well, they can be removed. These ones, they basically will pull out here, but they are a little tougher to put back in. They, as the fans aren't actually pulling through here, this is more just a passive collection. So you probably won't need to clean this as much as you would the front grill area, just to kind of keep it nice and clean, which this actually has its own removable filter right here. There's okay. actually a removable filter on the front. That's the one you'd probably want to clean. And so that one's easily removable. These ones, we don't really recommend it on the front because they are encapsulated within the mesh piece. So we don't really want to have people tearing those out because probably create more issues than you'd actually solve. Okay. Well, you guys saw the front of the case, very easily removed. We'll also just set that off to the side. So they're gonna dissect the beast more and more and more. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and let's talk about the front features that are right here on the top of the case. So what all do we have right here on this part of the case, Shannon? Well, you got your USB 2.0 ports along with USB 3.0 ports, which use an internal motherboard 20 pin header, which is what most common motherboards now use. And then you also have an eSATA header, which connects directly to any of your internal SATA ports. And also you have your audio ports. So therefore you have access through the front without having to reach around the rear of your case. For most case, for most things you need like thumb drives or external drives or anything like that. And you also have right up top, you have some fan controls along with your power and reset switch. And what about this little thing right here? Now, is this just like having your own little device for sticking your, your drives right in there, right on top? Well, that's what I was gonna mention next is actually, it's uh, similar to our Black X enclosure, except it's put in the top of the chassis. So therefore you can drop a bare drive in, whether it's SSD 2.5 or 3.5 inch standard drive will fit right in there. And it's a direct SATA connection into the board. So it's a white X connection. Well, this one would be considered a white edition Black X. Oh man, all right then. <laughs> all right, that's pretty funny stuff. So all right folks, so that kind of covers the front of it. You guys saw it, removal mesh screen, all that good stuff. Now we're gonna spin around and we'll show you the internal guts of the inside of the case where we can see right off the bat that we have the accessories pack. So here I'm gonna go ahead and open the box up. Now right off the bat, what's this little first thing we have here, Shanman? That's a 3.5 front adapter, like I said before. In order to fit a 3.5 um, floppy drive, which isn't real common, but let's say like a card reader, that would go right through there. And it also goes in combination with the other piece you'll find right in here. This right. is your uh, th five and a quarter bracket. This allows mounting of multiple different drive types, or of course, most commonly for like an external card reader, if you're really gonna use that kind of thing. So you just stick that in there, stick that in your normal bay, mount this little piece and away you go, right? Exactly. Okay. Then also we got this little bag here. We've got, what, it's that a little PCP speaker that's inside of there? Yeah. A lot of motherboard companies these days actually are cheap, we've noticed lately, and they don't include that, so it's kind of cool you guys do. We also have some Molex connectors, all of the offshoots, and I guess the rest of the stuff is for, is that for cable management? Is that the stuff that's on there? Well, you got the eight pin, this is actually an extender because some power supplies don't have a long enough cable. So this is actually an extension that allows it to reach up and around so that you can plug it in for a taller chassis. Okay. And, and also me, all of the standoffs and screws. Let me go ahead and pull this out of the bag so the audience can actually get a closer look at it. Here is the part that Chan is talking about. If you're doing some of your cable routing and your power supply cable is not long enough, they include this one. It's actually sleeved as well. It's black and sleeved, so you can use that. They've also have a lot of zip ties that are in here. Lots and lots of little zip ties that I'm spilling all, all over the place here. We just get it all out here, why not? Here is the PC speaker, folks. This would plug into your motherboard, so if you get that little beep in your computer post, beep, this will actually work and you'll hear it now. So. Here go all the rest of the accessories. These are all your offshoots, fan accessories, everything you need to mount the rest of your fans and all that stuff on the case. So now that we've got that out of the way, Shen, let's talk about the inside of the case and what makes this case pretty cool. Okay, well, one of the things is we've noticed that socket locations on boards do change quite often. So therefore, instead of having your standard cutout, we actually made the cutout much larger. As you can see, it actually reaches the farthest ATX mounting, um, the farthest ATX mounting stud. So therefore we can make sure that no matter where your socket location is, you should be able to take off and re you know remove and install coolers without having to remove the motherboard because of a back plate. So it makes life a lot easier. Not to mention, like we said before, all these pockets right here allow you to uh, route cables with a lot less effort and a lot, basically be able to hide cables behind the motherboard tray so that you have a much fancier looking system. For those people who really complain about that type of stuff. Yeah, you know, a lot of people like to be able to look through, for instance, the included window on the side panel, and they want to see something clean. They don't want to see a rat's nest of wires. 
And this will help with that quite a bit, true? Oh, absolutely. And then also back here in the back of the case, we see there's a bunch of cable routing wires as well. So these are all the routes. You got power right here. You also have everything for USB 2.0, 3.0, including the 3.0 connection, which is the blue one right here, correct? Yeah, the 20 pin connector. And then you also have all the front panel connections, including the power connection, because this, like I said before, this is a fan controller here. So it actually has a low and high setting and a fan LED setting. So it has a, a four pin Molex that you'll want to connect to make sure all the fans work properly. Excellent. Now let's talk about these little oh, the doohickeys little... there. Yeah, we have a little slide out easy access drive trays. They have removable plastic inserts to allow installation of a drive without screws like we said before. They just snap in place and the drive's withheld, slides in. Of course, if you have an SSD, you do have to, you have to secure it with screws directly through the bottom. Okay, but so it doesn't, it doesn't have a snap-in feature for the SSDs then? No, because SSDs vary in design and size, depending. I mean, you've seen the ones where some of them have plastic cladding, things like that around them. It's really hard to necessarily do it that, whereas all SSDs have a standard mounting hole pattern across the bottom. So it's much easier to get them fixed that way. And then you just go ahead and you insert it directly through. Hook your cables up right through the back. You've got them all hidden back here. Power and battery, and you're pretty much ready to run. All right, so what about the back of the case right here? We can see that in the back of the case we have a single fan. And then we also have what looks like three rubber little holes that I guess are going to be for using a water-cooled system, correct? Uh, for the most part, they would be a water-cooled system. Some people even use them, I've seen, for cable pass-throughs. But for the most part, this is designed actually for liquid cooling. For liquid cooling pass-through, um, we actually have much larger holes than some manufacturers because we want to make sure that no matter what size liquid cooling tubing you're using, you have the option there to run it through. And in this particular case, the power supply does mount on the bottom and the back like most normal ones. Yeah, just standard ATX power supply, mounts right in the bottom. And you even have an adjustable support brace right down at the bottom that you can adjust forward or backwards so that you have a support at the far end of the power supply and all your weight's not at the back where it could possibly twist or bend. What about using some of the very large, like long power supplies, like your guys' 1475, will that fit in here as well? Absolutely. It's got an adjustment of almost, uh, I would say three and a half, maybe four inches for this bracket so that no matter what size power supply, from the smallest all the way up to the biggest will fit in there. Before we wrap this up, there's one thing I just really want to go over and talk about more is really about the cable management. We said before how you can cleanly put your hand back here and everything and show that, but there's also something even more to that. Here you can see the case wall itself on the back panel, and it is also cut out. So we have plenty of room back there for total cable management, which means if you're one of those people who's very anal about hiding all their cables with the new Armor Revo Snow White Edition, you're gonna have no problem doing that whatsoever. So that's pretty much it, folks. Shannon, thanks for coming in, but I did notice that there is something else that we did not talk about, and that is the very bottom of the case. Let's not miss that, because there are some features about the very bottom of this case, and uh, let's talk about them. Well, yeah, you have the option to fit fans at the bottom as well, like, uh, for instance, a 120 millimeter fan directly at the bottom that can blow up or down, whichever you prefer. But one important feature also is, like I said before, the integration of fan filters. You have the front one I showed you. The top one has it integrated as well. It's not really removable. It's more just keeping stuff from falling into the chassis. Then you also have the PSU and fan. It's actually a really long length one. You'll notice it goes much farther than your PSU would be. So therefore you can remove this and you saw it just slide in, slide out. It just goes into place and you're able to remove it, clean it, and just keeps your case a little more. Helps, or actually I should say helps a lot more with keeping your case dust free. All right. And then how much is this case coming to market? Uh, it's right around 189 from what I've seen right now. Okay. And it all depends on where you go. You know, you can always find a deal in Newegg or places like that, Tucker Direct or Amazon even. All righty then. So, hey folks, I mean, that's pretty much it. We're bringing you guys the quick magic unboxing and features look at the new Thermal Take Armor Revo Snow Edition. So, thanks for watching. We'll actually be building a whole system in this pretty soon, and then we'll get back to you and show you pictures of that. See you later.